It happens once a year. Albion, Temple, Colossal, and now Terra, Europe's big super major events bring the continent together, attract overseas champions, and showcases the toughest gameplay Europe has to offer. This year, we saw invaders from North America and Japan. Tasked with defending against four top 10 players in Tweak, Spargo, Yoshidora, and Light, the continent faces its toughest challenge yet. In years past, Europe has struggled to defend against invaders from North America and Japan. Most recently, Colossal was swept by Mexico, with few upsets materializing at all. And the year before that, T winning Temple, Europe's first big major post-pandemic. With just four top 50 players crowned for Lumirang mid-year, Terra became a golden opportunity for Europe to finally prove it can step up. I'm Easy Freezy, a part of Lumirang, Smash Ultimate's premier player ranking system under Luminosity Gaming, and today we are going to break down the results, biggest upsets, and how this event impacts Europe's potential to get multiple players in the top 100 by the end of the year. Let's get started. Things started off quiet on day one. We saw an important upset in round two pools with Big Chungus, yes, that is a real tag, managing to beat Lugi, a recently crowned top 50 player and one of Europe's best. Terra, however, quickly turned into a chaotic event during top cut. After some time out of the spotlight, Base Mage would soundly upset Takero, one of Japan's three big invaders. One round later, he 3 0 Siski, granting him his biggest win since April. Elsewhere in the bracket, Yoshidora had cruised through his round 1 pools. This set him up for a potential encounter with Gluttony ahead, his statistical European counterpart who he narrowly beat out for the number 10 spot this past summer. However, he'd fall to a different Frenchman entirely, losing 0 3 to Raflo in winners and ending up as one of Europe's biggest wins for the event. Now, Raflo hasn't been a stranger to the limelight at major events. And while he did just place 13th at SmashCon earlier in the year, this run was his most successful since King of Fields 95-2 last summer. That being said, he would fight but falter to Gluttony in the top 8 qualifier set, dropping down to losers, but his story wasn't quite over yet. We'll get back to him later. Sweden's number one and the best Nordic player, Big Chungus, who sports an impressive 89.5% win rate since 2022, managed to tear up the bracket on the second day. In winners, he defeated Orion, a longtime top French Wolf player, and rolled through losers bracket after taking a loss to light. After beating up and coming French player Trey Psadi, Switzerland's best player Jaka, and US Invader Base Mage to make the top eight. So far, the continent has done a good job defending itself. It only gets better with Crepe Sadi's ascendance in the last few months. One of several young and rising French players, he had it rough with a loss to Sparkle in the losers at Super SmashCon 2023. Here, he got revenge against NA, with his Wario defeating Zamba in round 1 of Top 64 and taking a respectable 13th finish. Super Semi, a longtime player from the Netherlands, also successfully defended against one of Japan's invading players, Jogabu, the world's best Captain Falcon. Despite Jogabu's experience in the Young Link matchup, Super Semi managed a swift 3 0 over the Kansai Falcon player. While Jogabu fared well against Jezo and Mikuro in losers, Siski would end his run at 17th in a 3 2 nailbiter set. By this point, Loser's Bracket had turned into a shark pit. Yoshidora, Siski, Cosmos, Takara, Tarek, all big names with the potential to make top 8 that ultimately faltered. For the first time since Main Stage 2022, Team Japan had been shut out, with all three of their contenders losing to Europeans. The Loser's Bracket ended with Zamba being a major beneficiary, taking out Mr. R, Yoshidora, and Andre Safen in close sets to clinch top 8. Bloom for Eva, hot off a close set with Light, defeated Siski for his top 8 qualifier. Back to Raflo, despite his loss to Gluttony, picked up the pieces and narrowly defeated Tarek for top 8, and was scheduled to face down Big Chungus. Tarek, despite being out before top 8, has built a strong record at Super Majors, placing at his highest at 1 for the year, 9th, after already performing well at SmashCon and Battle of BC this year. At this point, the stage was set. Winners was nearly as predicted, but the loser's bracket path was messier, and left a cavalcade of upsets in its wake that proved Europe had the fire in them to compete with the best of North America and Japan. Loser's top 8 started off slow. Raffle would stage a tremendous comeback to defeat Big Chungus 3-1 despite a stock deficit. Chungus, for his part, would be the first Nordic player to top 8 the Smash Ultimate Super Major, leaving his mark at a historic event. Raffle's struggles seem to give way this event, making an impressive run that helps his case for the top 100 by the end of the year. It's also arguably the best run of his career to date, building on his successful SmashCon run just a month ago and adding a top 10 win to the mix. Bloom Forever and Zamba at last cross paths. Just over a month ago, Zamba faltered against Mexican Bayonetta Mar at Smash Factor X, so the outcome here seemed inevitable. Bloom Forever, having struggled at recent European majors and in desperate need of a big win, cleanly shut Zamba out, ending the American Invaders' impressive loser's bracket run. This was huge for Bloom Forever, who built a reputation as Europe's second best player over the last few months. Not only did this offset his run at King of Fields 95-3, it gave him his first big win over top North American players since he defeated Jake and MK Big Boss late last year at Double Down. Winners was going about as one might expect. Neither Spargo nor Tweak seemed to face much adversity in their paths to top 8. Neither dropped the game despite some tough opponents. 
Glutiny's path was scary. He avoided Yoshidora, but had to mount a reverse 3 0 against Mr. R to stay alive in winners. He'd put up another good fight against Spargo, but finally fell to losers in a set similar to their fight at Delfino Maza last month. For now, the star of the show seemed to be Tweak. Not only was this his first clean top 8 since Crown the Third, but he pushed it a step further in the slobber knocker set against Light that went down to the wire. Poised to fight Spargo, he walked in with a competitive record against Mexico's best. Spargo held an edge, but Tweak had managed two consecutive victories at Let's Make Big Moves 2023 and seemed on fire. The set that followed was one of the best of the year, with both players pulling out every trick in the book. As things seemed dire for Tweak, he mounted an incredible comeback and made grand finals at a super major for the first time in months. His Diddy Kong has conquered North America's finest, and all he had to do was repeat the process with plenty of leeway. But who met him in Grand Finals wasn't exactly who we all thought. His opponent in Grand Finals was not going to be Spargo again, or any of the other North American players who made top 8. It was in fact going to be Gluto. In his path to make Grands, he first had to deal with Bloom for Eva, who he struggled with in the past, but he quickly tore through Bloom here. The next player in his path was Light, a player who that often struggles against top Warios, and suddenly got eaten alive by Glutiny. It had been four years and counting since Europe had defended a Super Major to the end, and despite Glutiny's recent losses to Spargo, he wanted the chance to break the curse. After going down 1-2 to Spargo in Losers Finals, he turned Turned the heat up and successfully beat Spargo. Tweak now had to fight Glutiny. Their set history as of late hasn't been great for Tweak. Tweak only managed a single win against him in the last year and a half. As one might expect, Glutiny rode his momentum into a swift 3 0 for set 1 of Grands, relentlessly tearing Tweak apart. Tweak would not give up. He opened set 2 with a decisive 2 stock and made game 2 close. Game 3 proved to be out of reach, but Tweak refused to concede and narrowly took game 4 after being behind nearly the entire game. Game 5 started out differently. Despite an amazing start that peaked with a full stock lead, Gluto would play safe and keep things close despite a consistent stock deficit. Late in the game, Glutony had narrowed it to nearly even with him managing to take Tweak's second stock off, barely getting hit in the process. Tweak would recover a steady lead, but you know how it goes. His 100% lead, as strong as it was, melted when Glutony utilized a banana and wafted Tweak to win the event in a stunning fashion. For the first time in years, the victor of a European Super Major wasn't an invader, but Europe's longtime best player, Glutiny. The event proved a lot of things. Japan wasn't invincible, America could falter, and Europe could thrive. Not only did things turn out incredibly well for Europe with many of their rising stars taking critical sets, Glutiny staged the greatest defense of his continent to date, blowing his already impressive run at Albion 4 out of the water. Gluto narrowly missed the top 10 during Lumerank's Summer Edition, but this event, at least for now, has closed doubts that he is likely a top 10 contender for the end of the year. After limited runs at Battle of BC5 and Smash Ultimate Summit 6, Glutiny has come roaring back, now winning every European event since June and finishing fresh at both Mexican majors. Behind him is an army of incredible talent that stands to expand Lumirank's share of top 100 European players by the end of the year. With just six players in the top 100 of the mid-year rankings, things are likely to change for them with runs from budding talent across the continent. After years of struggling to defend, Europe put up the best fight it's ever mustered in Ultimate's history, not only defending the title belt, but proving a cross bracket that had the depth and talent to stand up to North America and Japan. There's still plenty of more Smash to be played this year, but make no mistake, Europe is here and they're ready to win.